Welcome to Inspire Campfire, a podcast where ordinary people tell their stories of extraordinary adventure. These are campfire stories meant to inspire the rest of us to light the fire within, get outside, follow our dreams, and return to tell our own stories. Ready? Let's strike the match. Welcome to the show. I am your host, Scott Wurzbacher, and this episode has been almost three years in the making. I am both honored and giddy to introduce today's <laughs> guest, Robert Holden, PhD, who has been a mentor and spiritual teacher to me for the past three years. When this episode releases, we will be celebrating the one-year birthday of Inspire Campfire. Robert's encouragement and teachings were at the very center of the inspiration that I received to start this podcast, and for that, I am so grateful. Robert is a New York Times author of 13 books, including Happiness Now, Shift Happens, Authentic Success, and Life Loves You, which he co-wrote with Louise Hay. He works as a consultant to leaders and organizations on themes of purpose and leadership. He teaches public programs on living your purpose, including mastermind groups and retreats. Robert's work has been featured on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Good Morning America, a PBS special called Shift Happens, and two major BBC TV documentaries on happiness. Now, over the past year, this podcast, we've shared stories of ordinary people and their extraordinary stories of adventure. More importantly, we've talked about the voice inside that calls us to those adventures. And Robert Holden is responsible for helping me to recognize my own voice inside. I've learned so much from him and it's my great joy to have him on the show. And the timing couldn't be better because he has a new book coming out this week called Higher Purpose, <laughs> How to Find More Inspiration, Meaning and Purpose in Your Life. I had the chance to read an advanced copy and it is so good. This is a very special day indeed. Robert, welcome to the campfire. <laughs> Scott, thank you very much. I share in your giddiness. Uh, <laughs> we've both had to be a bit patient, haven't we, to do yeah, this? We um, have. But I think this is good timing. It's, it's nice to be um, riding the wave of a new book and therefore uh, an important conversation um, to be having in the world. And I want to congratulate you on one year of being doing Inspire Campfire. How cool is that? I mean, a year. It is, and, it. It, and it's super cool to have you here to kind of yeah. celebrate that with me, especially all that, that we've been through. I, I wondered, Robert, if we could just start for listeners, um, if you could kind of just give us a little bit more about your story kind of leading up to writing a book about purpose. How did, how did we get to this point? Well, that's a, a small question that <laughs> deserves a, a good answer, a big answer perhaps, but I mean, I would say in some ways, you know, high, higher purpose is, is um, I've just received my copy, by the way, oh, it's, it's beautiful. Quite exciting to get a sort of physical copy. Um, you know, this is this is part memoir, really. Um, in many ways, this is a, a write up of every other book I've written. And um, it's a write up of the journey, you know, that journey that happens with, from looking for your purpose to really living it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think that uh, for me, I've always been interested in those big questions in life. Um, questions about you know what is happiness what is success why are we here um how can we live a good life you know those questions have always interested me i've always been inspired by them uh but i think i was also forced into asking some of those questions too from a very early age um i grew up in a, a little village um in the uk called littleton so it was very little <laughs> and we had we had one pub one bus stop one cricket pitch um you know there wasn't a lot going on um except that in my family both my mum and my dad were really um 
tending to their own wounds and their own demons, if you like. Yeah, we, we were a very loving family, Scott. You know, I've, I, I know how much my mum loved me and how much I loved her. I know how much my dad loved me and how much I loved him. But they were carrying wounds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we we always knew about my mum's wound, which was really um, depression, mm -hmm. recurring bouts of depression, which are very, very difficult uh, for everybody to deal with. Anybody who's experienced depression knows how, how uh, difficult it is. Um, when mum's depression would arrive, it would arrive unannounced. We 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 never we would never be expecting it. Um, and then this this guest, if you like, would stay for a few days um, or sometimes weeks or sometimes she'd have to go. She'd have to leave home and go into a hospital. Mm. So that was incredibly uh, painful. Um, but uh, then with my dad, when I was a teenager, that's when we became aware that he was dealing really with his own difficulties. Mm -hmm. He was always supporting mum. So the focus was on mum. And then we realized that he was dealing with his difficulties. And for him, this was he was really dealing with his difficulties with alcohol. So he was experiencing alcoholism. And he actually left home when I was about 15. Mm -hmm. And he lived homeless for the last 10 years of his life on and off. He had places to live, but he was often homeless. And um, so, you know, those two uh, heartbreaks, traumas, wounds, whatever you want to call them, honestly, Scott, they, you know, they, um, I think, somersaulted me forward into an inquiry in life about like, well, what is life really for and what's right. the real purpose of life? Right. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, it was a lot. To, it was a lot to take. It was a lot to deal with. But, you know, one of the things that it really taught me is that, see, a lot of people think they can't live their purpose because they have experienced wounds, that they have had a trauma in their life. But actually, what I've learned, it's is that your traumas and your wounds aren't blocks to your purpose. They're actually doorways to your purpose. Mm. Um, they start off looking like blocks for sure. And you think to yourself, well, I can't live the life I wanted to live because X happened and Y happened and Z happened. But actually after a while, once you really, you really meet these wounds and these traumas with enough support um, and enough love and enough insight, you begin to see that actually they are all somehow part of the big plan. Yeah. Um, you know, these these traumas, these wounds are what um, kick you out of ordinary. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Part of the hero's journey, which we're going to talk about. So, mm -hmm. um, so Robert, how... how I gave you a good feed there. So. <laughs> you did. <laughs> and I, and I de definitely. We're definitely going to go there. We talk about the hero's journey <laughs> on this podcast. But um, before we jump there, so, you know, kind of jumping into your 20s and, and mm -hmm. your journey kind of getting started here and, you know, writing books and you yeah, somehow end up on the Oprah Winfrey show. I mean, how does how does that happen? Yeah, you can't plan for that. You know, there's, <laughs> not a, there's not a marketing campaign yeah. that's going to make that happen. But again, what I would say, this is the magic of living a purpose centered life. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what I knew early on was that I wanted to live a meaningful life. And because of what had happened to my mom and my dad, I really didn't just want a job. I didn't just want a salary. I didn't just want a career. I didn't have an ideal like that to live up to. All of that crashed. You know, um, I should point out my dad was very successful in business, you know, for example. So for him to end up alcoholic, that was a disillusionment. I was hit by a disillusionment before I'd even begun. And but that disillusionment, again, was part of living a purpose centered life. I started asking questions and um, I decided to study psychology and uh, philosophy. Um, I found a, a program at Birmingham in Birmingham, in, which is in the middle of the UK uh, and uh, second city of the UK after London. And it was a program which offered me modules on psychology, philosophy, sociology, linguistics. So it gave me this great, wonderful opportunity to explore life and to be able to live with some of those big questions. 
And after three years, I still wasn't ready for a job. So I took on another three years of study. But these were these were really three years of self-directed study. So I signed up for courses on psychotherapy, um, philosophy, um, spirituality. I just stuck, just took as many courses as I could Mm -hmm. um, in that time. And, you know, I met people along the way. I came across my supernatural aid, another Joseph Campbell term. And one of those people actually was a fellow student on my uh, three year degree program who was he was a mature student on the program uh, we were all 18 years old he was 24 okay very mature he was six years older than us and he was really interesting his name was avanti he sat at the back of the class he was always the last in and always the first out and none of us knew anything about him i knew that there was something about him but i also felt rather um uh, nervous around him, a little bit intimidated by him. Um, but anyway, I decided about six or seven weeks into term, I thought to myself, right, I'm going to say hello to this, to this chap. And, um, so the school bell went for the end of class. He was already running off. I ran after him, caught up with him. And, um, I said, hi, you know, Avanti, my name's Robert. He said, yes, I know. And, um, I said, yeah, yeah, we're like, we're on the same course, aren't we? And we haven't even spoken yet. And I said something like, what, what made you choose this course? And, um, he said to me, well, I came to meet you. And, uh, yeah. And, um, that threw me. And I said something like, well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to meet you. (laughs) (laughs) He's a bit mysterious, a bit strange. But you know what? He was a a yogi. He was a student of uh, philosophy and metaphysics. And the first book he ever gave me was the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. And that book absolutely opened my eyes to living an inspired life rather than simply a, 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 a doing the thing of a career, a retirement and, a, and um, a well-attended funeral. You know, it was like, I'm going for this inspired life. Yeah. And the Bhagavad Gita is a, um, it, it's a poem, actually, two and a half thousand years old. But it uh, tells the story of an encounter between Arjuna, who's on a battlefield, Um, unsure of what move to make next, feeling lost, alone and uncertain. And his charioteer, Krishna, is there to guide him and support him on his journey. And he points out there are these paths you can take in life. And if you take them and if you're brave, you will live an inspired life and it will be full of purpose and meaning and synchronicity and wonder and you may even end up on the Oprah Winfrey show or <laughs> on Scott's Inspire Campfire <laughs> podcast. I love um, it. They're, you yeah. know, they're right there together. You know, those those two shows, they're, they're well, both you right. see, the thing is, you never know, do you? Once you start living a life of purpose, really, you are signing up to a plan that you are not in control of. It's a plan that's bigger than yours. It's a plan you can't make up. You and I could not have found a way to be friends if we weren't living purpose-centered lives. I'm convinced of that. It was the purpose, our joint, our shared sense of purpose that brought us together, Scott. And it's one of the reasons why I think we enjoy each other's company so much is because we we are um, sort of encouraged and heartened by each other's sense of going for our purpose, saying yes to our purpose, being brave, you know, and trying stuff. Yeah. Well, mm. and, and, and it's true. The story of, of how you and I came to be connected there, there was just a whole series of karmic synchronicities and people mm-hmm. that I met along the way that kind of, you know, showed me signs and pointed me to things. And I read one of your books and then became aware of your success intelligence mastermind and uh thought to myself like why would robert holden want me to be part of this but somebody else encouraged me to apply and i said yes and 
two or three days later had a personal email from Robert Holden inviting me to be part of this group. And so, you know, it just opens this whole world, but that it, it just so happens that the success intelligence mastermind that I participated in happened to take place right at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And mm -hmm. like, what a miracle that was to be part of that group led by you in such a difficult time. Yeah. Um, but I remember we had some one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions during that uh, mastermind. And I will never forget that one session that we had where you introduced me to this concept of the hero's journey. Yeah. And it's a, it's a big part of your book, um, higher purpose, and you talk about it in there, but because the hero's journey has become such a sort of a framework for the stories that we tell on this podcast, I would just, I would love for the listeners to hear from Robert Holden a little bit more about this thing called the hero's journey. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, the, there's a chapter in the book called the hero you are, um, it starts page 57 and um let's see maybe i could yeah i could just share with you a little bit from this but um please yeah so um yeah here i just say joseph campbell's map of the hero journey has been a great help to me in my quest for meaning and purpose i've watched the power of myth more times than any other documentary and I'm more inspired by each time I watch it. In a recent interview, I was asked to name my Desert Island book. That's easy. It's A Course in Miracles. I told my interviewer that if I could also take a Desert Island DVD with a special solar powered DVD player, it would be the Power of Myth DVD series. So um, this particular um, series, which uh, is a PBS special, of course, and is a series of conversations between um, Joseph Campbell, the creator of The Hero Journey, and also Bill Moyers, who is his great friend. Um, the two of them create this wonderful conversation over six episodes where they are talking about the power of myth and the hero's journey. And I have to say, yeah, when I first came across this, Scott, I was absolutely enthralled. It made perfect sense. Here was a map that everybody can relate to. And it is, it's the map that really um, takes us, I think, from um, an ordinary life into an extraordinary life, uh, a life of, of great adventure. And in, you know, I really had the sense when we were meeting that you were on the threshold. <laughs> you had all the hallmarks to me of being on the threshold of a new adventure. And I wanted you to have this map because it had been such a great help for me. And I just, I just trusted and hoped that it might be a, a great help for you. Um, so what can we say about the hero's journey? I mean, I think it's first it's enough to say that it's um, it, it happens in essentially three acts. And the three acts of the hero's journey are very much um, in alignment with the um, the sort of the three acts that also take part in um, very much in dramatic theory as well, going all the way back to the Greeks. So Joseph Campbell wasn't really inventing something with the hero's journey. He was really observing a pattern mm -hmm. that exists in all of our stories. That's why his book, A Hero with a Thousand Faces, um, that was the title for the book, was this idea that we all of us have, we all of us are really following in a way the same map, but mm -hmm. we're all taking the journey in our own way. Yeah. And we start with, the initiation and the initiation is usually getting kicked out of ordinary yep. and for me getting kicked out of ordinary was absolutely what happened to my mum and dad that's what set me on my path um, but getting kicked out of ordinary can you know that can happen to you in all sorts of ways um, um, how did it happen for you Scott I mean how did you get kicked out of ordinary you know, I think it was um, like around the time that I became connected with you. I, you. I think you might remember me talking about this with the group when I first introduced myself. But I, 
my whole life have spent my mornings alone, right? Reading and digesting. And, you know, I kind of had this, this morning routine and it was a, it was a spiritual time for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but there was the rest of the day that came along and it was just getting pounded with emails and just getting sucked into the the daily routine. And I just, you know, as uh, the more this went on, the more I was feeling like disconnected from myself. Like there was this, mm -hmm. I called it my pre 8 a.m. Scott. And then yeah. there was my post 8 a.m. Scott. Yeah. And I think my objective when I met you was just sort of like figuring out how to integrate these two Scots. And I think my goal at that point was to bring the pre 8 a.m. Scott, more of my pre pre 8 a.m. Scott to that post 8 a.m. Scott. And that's, yeah. and that's, that's what we, we did in that success intelligence mastermind. And I continue to work on that now, but it, it, mm -hmm. it's that, it was that feeling of like being disconnected with myself, I think. Yeah. And, and so that's a great example of how, you know, it, getting kicked out of ordinary, or if you like, it's all yours was more of what I'd call a voluntary step to actually end ordinary, to move away from ordinary. Up until that point, ordinary was, you know, pre 8 a.m. Scott and then post 8 a.m. Scott. But that ordinary, which had worked for you for a while, and it really had, let's be clear, that was working well now wasn't working as well for you as you wanted it to. And, you know, one of the things that I remember from our conversations was it was that sense of aliveness. You wanted to get that sense of aliveness that could run all through your day rather than just early on in your day. And that's a big factor, I think, in Joseph Campbell's work. In Joseph Campbell's work, when we take on the hero's journey, we are saying yes to an adventure and what we're really saying yes to is a great is often is often a sense of aliveness. And mm. I think that's, um, you know, partly what you were, were doing there. So sometimes when we begin the hero's journey, it can come from inspiration. It can come from meeting somebody new. That's, again, in a way, how it happened for me with when I met Avanti as well. He was part of that. Um, but also, I would say, actually, that happened a little bit after what we call crossing the threshold. Um, but there is just this sense of getting kicked out of ordinary. I also want to say, by the way, you know, I this book is 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 my COVID project. And so getting kicked out of ordinary, there's a there's a whole chapter in here essentially um on I call it the death of normal, where I'm really looking at COVID as being our collective getting kicked out of ordinary. Yeah. So sometimes getting kicked out of ordinary is also collective, not just individual. It's something that happens to a lot of us and it can come from a pandemic. It could come from a forest fire in our community. It could come from um, um, an energy crisis. It could come from a war. You know, all of these things that disturb the normal um, or the ordinary are normally what get us into the journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, I love this. And so, so where does this voice that calls us to adventure come into play? Well, this voice, um, I would suggest to you is your original voice. It's been with you the whole time. Um, and it will, it's available to you your whole life but it will speak up for you at certain points in your life when you most need to hear it. And uh, this voice is, um, it, it's, uh, it, I say we've all got one. Uh, in Higher Purpose, I, I also very much, uh, I'm inspired by the work of Carl Jung. Mm -hmm. And Carl Jung talks about the need for us to have a vocation and he says that uh, anybody who has a vocation has been addressed by a voice. And that voice, once again, is our, I would call it our original voice. It's that truth voice that exists in each and every one of us. And it is the voice that, that guides us um, the whole time, whether we're listening to it or not. But it is up to us to listen to it. 
So we may experience that voice literally um, audibly, but I would also like to say that we use voice as a metaphor. So it might be that it's more of a sense for you rather than a voice. It might be a feeling that you get in your bones. Um, it may well be um, a, a nudge that you get, you know, in your body somehow. Um, it can be it can be a feeling you experience in your heart. It you know it's it's a sense of living a guided life. I think that's the thing we would say. You are um, the metaphor I like to use in higher purpose is that you are pulled by a golden thread. Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm borrowing here from a um, a Greek myth. Um, where, but it's this idea that we are pulled by a golden thread. Yeah. And, and part of the hero's journey is the refusal of the call. Yes, exactly. So what makes the hero's journey so dramatic, I suppose, is that we are called, we've, we've had that encounter with inspiration we our life has been turned upside down we have experienced a wound um things have changed and therefore we are asked to say a hearty yes to our adventure and the first thing we are going to do joseph campbell says is we will refuse the call there will be that uh, there will be those other voices in our in our mind which say hey hey wait a minute wait a minute, not so fast, you know, that old normal that we're about to let go of, was it really that bad, you know? And um, so there's this sense of better the devil you know, there's that sense of, well, look, this normal wasn't great, but at least it, at least I knew what it was, and at least it was predictable. Hey, I was functioning. <laughs> hey, you know, there was some money in the bank. Hey, yeah, I had status. Do we want to throw away status, you know, for this new adventure, which seems to have no guarantees to it? You know, I was doing pretty well. I had some credentials. I could still use those initials after my name. Are we sure we want to give all of that up? You know, so there's there's essentially like a debate that happens here. And um, so we may delay um, saying yes to the call. We may even for a while just decide to stick with normal. And, you know, a lot of the times what happens is you have this sense of, well, OK, I'm, I'm back with normal now and um, it's going pretty well, um, except that I'm not feeling alive. And I, I'm finding it difficult to wake up each day and really get excited about my life. And so I'm this is safe, but maybe there's more to life than simply playing it safe and and so eventually after a while i think the call gets represented to us again and again and again and eventually i think it occurs to us that it's more of a risk not to say yes to the call than it is to say yes to the call yeah yeah I mean, that makes sense yeah it becomes a risk worth taking it's this sense of oh darn it, I've got to do this. Because if I don't do this, it just doesn't feel right in my body. It doesn't feel good in my heart. And my my head's foggy. And I just can't seem to do the thing I used to do before. I've got to do this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so then what happens when we do finally say yes? <laughs> well, often, we hit a um, we're, we're now basically we're crossing the threshold mm -hmm. and usually you get a you get some sort of a reward. You get some sort of a treat, you know. Um, in fact, I was coaching somebody yesterday um, who's really going for something in their lives right now. They're really being brave and um, nothing seemed to be happening. And um, they, they basically sent up a prayer like sending a flare up into the sky, you know, you send yeah. a flare up into the sky. And it, and she just said, look, I just said to everybody up there, you're sort of pointing to heaven, you know, I need a lucky break here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, like a day later, 
she gets an invitation, which is exactly what she needs in order to be able to move forward. Sometimes it's like that on on in the hero's journey. You 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 make a start and nothing seems to happen. You take that step and you're met by nothing. Mm -hmm. Partly this is because you are emptying out from the old normal, by the way. This happens a lot when people like get ordained, when they graduate, you know, they think life's just going to happen now because they're ordained or they're graduated or they're promoted. And it doesn't. If anything, it's like the wind in the sails drops and nothing happens. Yeah. But you hold faith. And once you hold faith, then that gust of wind happens. And that gust of wind can appear in many different ways. For me, for example, it was meeting Avanti. When you cross the threshold, that will be when you might meet your first um, encounter with supernatural aid. Gandalf will appear. Um, and when Gandalf appears, you've got this friend with you on your journey now. And here's the interesting thing that Joseph Campbell would say is that that friend can't appear. That supernatural aid cannot appear unless you take the step. You must take the step first if the supernatural aid is going to appear. Most of us, Scott, sign up for life the other way around. We say, no, wait a minute. Send me the supernatural aid yeah. <laughs> and then I'll take the step. But it seems to work the other way around in, in consciousness and in creation. We have to take the step first and then the supernatural aid happens. So, so what was your supernatural aid? Do you, can you think of a like a crossing the threshold moment that uh, made a difference for you? Well, certainly, you know, meeting you and the 16 people that were part of the success intelligence group. Yeah. You know, I, I was actually in preparation for this call. I went back and looked at my application that I sent in to you. And, you know, my two objectives were to find a spiritual teacher and to be able to um, find a group of people that I can actually talk to because that pre 8 a.m. Scott sits in my living room by myself and thinks about this stuff and ruminates. And mm -hmm. so, you know, to be able to have a group of people that I could actually talk about this stuff with was was what it was really all about. And so, you know, I mean, that happened. And yeah. and what's great is now here we are almost three years from when that group came together and I still have mm -hmm. all of those friendships and have have, uh, you know, done other things with those people. I've traveled with those people. Uh, it's just been it's been an incredible experience. The whole thing has been supernatural. Yeah. for me. Yeah. And and it can be like that. That is one of the joys that that particular mastermind that you're talking about i think we've done it i've done it seven times now mm -hmm. and each one of them is a hero's journey for sure um but to watch in particular you know you scott yes you you um in many ways we were all your supernatural aid but also you were you were our supernatural aid as well and there is something incredibly reciprocal about that sense on the journey you know of um of when we meet each other, the giving and the receiving is is it's an exchange, isn't it? Yeah. And um and that's one of the great joys about, by the way, of being on the hero's journey is that you're playing a part in other people's hero's journey. Yeah. And that's it, exciting. It, it's magic, and and I mean, you know, when you show up and when you just when you take the risk, when you when you do things, when you get after it, like you don't know what's going to show up. Like, but this podcast is a perfect example because now I've you know now a year in. I've had, you know, 50 something episodes and have met people along the way. And some of the things that have opened up for me based on guests that I never would have met had we not started this podcast, it's just like, it blows my mind. Yeah. Um, just got back from a trip to the kingdom of Bhutan with 10 <laughs> incredible people. And like, there's no way that trip ever would have happened had I not met Karen Dark, who was episode seven. And, you know, she's an incredible person. And, you know, she had this vision for this trip and brought me along. And, you know, it was just, it was magic. And, and all of that felt supernatural to me. So I completely understand this. And it's just, that's why I'm so excited to be able to share this all with the, with the listeners here. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the magic of it is that you are letting go of your plan for your life and you are subscribing to a bigger plan. And that certainly takes an act of faith. Um, we have to undo 
some of our conventions, some of our habits, some of our preferences. And one of them is, is that uh, we like to be in charge of our own plans. Mm -hmm. But actually, when we, when we really humble up, properly humble up, um, I think we, we accept that actually life isn't all to do with our own plan. Yes, we can make plans for sure. But there is a, a bigger plan that overrides everything. Um, and, and actually, you know, I'm a student of A Course in Miracles, which is a wonderful mm -hmm. sort of psycho-spiritual text, which actually says that um, it encourages us to stop making plans and to start receiving the plan that is available to us. So we're still living our life by plans, but they're less under our control and they're more to do with um, a greater experience that is available to us. And because of that, the need to follow guidance, the need to recognize the golden thread, the need to stay close to what inspires you and that what keeps you alive is vital. It's a whole other way of living. Yeah. And, and it, it, it requires these very, very necessary skills so that you can um, cross the threshold and get into the, into the journey as such. Yeah, it, it's so beautiful. And it's been so, it's been so inspiring to listen to each of the guests that have been on this podcast and that hero's journey that they've gone through in these, you know, some are micro stories, some are like macro stories, you know, but it's just been so cool to see all of these people going through, you know, what Joseph Campbell has, has coined as the hero's journey. And I yeah. have to, I have to share because this was something that like was a big aha for me and, and was a hook, I guess I would say. But when you told me about the power of myth, which is this documentary that Joseph Campbell does with Bill Moyer, was actually filmed at the George Lucas Skywalker ranch. <laughs> yeah. And when you told me that Joseph Campbell was the inspiration behind the star Wars saga, I mean, you had me right there because <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, you know, born in the seventies and, you know, my whole life has, um, paralleled this whole star Wars journey and the, and, and all of the characters in the star Wars uh, journey are all uh, perfect examples of what happens on the hero's journey. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when, when Joseph, um, published his book, which is, I think 1949, um, a hero with a thousand faces, um it was you know it's a mighty tome it's a mm -hmm. it's a thick book and um dense with um inspiration and references to myths all over the world and i think at the time his hope was that this would really get picked up by philosophers and psychologists but actually interestingly it really got picked up by artists writers producers, directors, people who saw this um, journey, a journey of, of departure, um, initiation and return, and thought, yeah, hey, hold on a minute. This is, these are the, the great stories of our life do have a departure, an initiation and a return. And um, how about if we were to create some modern stories with this, in a sense? And so, um, he really then became a mentor to many, many great writers, directors and producers. One of them was George Lucas, um, who, yeah, absolutely credited Joseph as um, as a mentor for the Star Wars journey. But look at any modern film these days. And in particular, by the way, look at um, look at a lot of the children's stories, especially the Pixar films. They all begin with the end of normal. You know, if you think of. Um, you know, sort of finding Nemo, any yeah. of the, you know, anything like this yeah. always begins with, with something that disturbs normal. Then you go from the known world into the unknown world. You go on a journey, you know, you do cross that threshold. You do meet your trials um, and you get to return. And when you return, um, yeah, you bring back what Joseph calls the boon. You bring back the reward and the reward really is you. You're the reward because you've been on this extraordinary journey and you are now a, a fully vitalized person who has vitality to share with everybody else. 
Yeah. And once you know about the hero's journey, you start to see it everywhere. Like everywhere. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. And yeah. so um, you go into detail about this in chapter two of the book. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about the rest of the book. This is really, really exciting. Um, and I, I'm so excited that I had the opportunity to read it in advance to prepare for this interview. And I was showing you before we recorded, I got to print the, so it hasn't come out yet. And I was telling you, I always, I always wondered how um, the endorsements get in there before the book actually comes out. But <laughs> but now I know I got this this PDF version that I was able to cut up and and put a cover on. So I had my own my own little version of it. But it, it's just it's fantastic. And I would love for you to talk a little bit more about the book and and what it means. Uh, higher purpose. Well, um you know, for many years now, I've I have given talks and masterclasses um, on, especially on leading with purpose mm -hmm. in companies and um, and in organisations, um, global brands like Dove and the Real Beauty campaign, um, and and companies like IBM and um, Google and Virgin companies that um, I think are inspired by a great sense of vision. And a great sense of purpose as well. I've also, you know, given um, uh, classes on leading with purpose in in schools and universities, in hospitals. I mean, everywhere really, you know. And this was all part of the Success Intelligence Project, which um, Success Intelligence was a boutique consultancy that I started in the year two thousand. So we were right on the threshold of a new millennium. And Scott, what I wanted to do was to um, help evolve our definitions of success. I wanted to see if it was possible to create new definitions of success for us, both personally and collectively, new definitions of success that would be good for us and good for the planet too. So this was very much my work with Success Intelligence and really a big part of that was these um, masterclasses on leading with purpose. Um, over and above that, I've also um, run a number of spiritual retreats on living your purpose over the years. And I've, I've been to some great places. Um, I've taken living your purpose to Assisi. Um, um, I've done that several times. Um, it's pretty much an annual retreat uh, to Assisi, um, work, looking at the work of St. Francis, who I call my patron saint of purpose. He's actually the patron saint of ecology, but he's my patron saint of purpose. And um, but we we also have gone to Findhorn and to Glastonbury and many other different places. Um, you know, it, and in fact, I've you know, part of that was doing a, a one year hero journey uh, mastermind program, mm -hmm. which um, I will do um, again in 2024. We'll do okay. a one year program on the hero's journey for then for sure. Um, and I would also say, by the way, you know, the mastermind programs and in particular the success intelligence mastermind. I think that was very much those masterminds where we work with a small group of people. The theme of purpose comes up a lot for right. sure. So, you know, this was I think it was on the cards. Um, and then actually the catalyst for writing the book was that I was having a dinner with um, Reed Tracy, the president of Hay House. Mm -hmm. um, we'd just finished a writer's workshop in Dublin, a two days event, two day event. Uh, we were having dinner in um, a place called the Garden Room Restaurant at the Mirian Hotel. Um, outside our uh, we were at table and outside the window was a life-size sculpture of James Joyce, the writer. I remember that. Um, we'd had a lovely evening and we'd managed not to talk about work or anything very much and um, to do with work. Um, but right at the end of the evening, he said, you know, um, have you ever considered writing a book on purpose? Um, we talked about Wayne Dyer, who was Reed's great friend. Reed and Wayne talked daily, every day for years, and properly every day for years. I was lucky enough to um, present with Wayne on, on over 50 I Can Do It conferences for Hay House. So we talked about Wayne's work, um, living an inspired life, the power of intention, manifest your destiny. And we just said, look, you know, I, I feel like that conversation needs to continue here at Hay House. Would you be interested in doing something? So um, 
then COVID happened. Yeah. And, you know, what I say in the book as well, by the, by the way, is, is what I noticed early on in the pandemic was I noticed that my friends and my clients, the people I coach and mentor, who already had a strong sense of purpose, were using the pandemic as this opportunity to strengthen their commitment to their purpose. Um, I say that, you know, along with the rest of us, they were being forced to adapt, diversify and cope with the losses and also reinvent how they worked and lived. They were suffering as much as the rest of us, but they were using their sense of purpose to energize themselves and it was helping them to be resilient and also to rise to the occasion. It was they were sustained by their sense of purpose. So that was one group of people. And then what I also noticed was that the effect of the COVID um, pandemic was that many more people were being willing now to question their purpose. And there was this sense that COVID was inviting people to live a more purpose-centered life. And more and more people were making those brave moves now to switch from just a job or a career or a salary to something much more worthwhile, much more meaningful and much more sustainable. So I felt the time was right to put this book together. And um, I basically, this is a write-up of everybody who's inspired me on my own journey of living a purpose-centered life. And so, you know, I, I talk about my time with success intelligence and, um, and that work. I also, there's a chapter in the book about the happiness project, which I ran all the way through the 90s. And that's how I originally met Oprah Winfrey was through the happiness project. But I also talk about um, my, my work uh, on love and loving relationships, my interest in the Enneagram. Um, uh, as well I mean really it's just jam-packed with my incident with everything that's inspired me quite honestly um you know that that's uh, has been as important to me as anything and actually you know the I would say the acknowledgements in the book are you know just go on and on as well because there were just so many people who truly inspired me and that were so supportive to me along the way as well and it took me a good couple of days to to write up all of the acknowledgements actually for the book because it was just so many people who were inspiring me scott so yeah that gives you a little overview yeah. i mean also i'd have to say i can't god it's, it's so easy to leave people out which is crazy but i mean you know there's a write-up essentially of three interviews in the book with maya angelou and those three interviews, you know, will stay with me forever. I mean, it yeah. was amazing to be in her company and to have her impart her wisdom and her ideas on what it means to live a purpose-centered life. So that's in there too. It, it And it's a great book and it really does summarize so much of your work. Like, you know, having known you now for three years and and really mm -hmm. been in part of your masterminds and, and to kind of see it all in practice. But I'm like, I just kind of wrote down like on my notes here and I'm just kind of looking through the progression. It's, it's so cool that like you started with happiness mm -hmm. right? and, and then it was kind of moving into success and mm -hmm. then love and now purpose. And it just feels yeah. like this really beautiful, like progression of your life and your teaching. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and, you know, drawing more and more people in, but, but the book is, is so, so, so good. And I think, um, like you talk about how, uh, purpose is not something that, um, we go find it's, it's something that finds you. And I think as we kind of wrap up on that book, like, could you just talk on that just for a minute? Yeah. What I would say is that, um, you know, a lot of people are trying to find their purpose. Mm -hmm. And, um, the thing about trying to find your purpose is that, um, you often, if you're not careful, you end up, um, missing what's right in front of you. And what I would say is, is that really you don't ever find your purpose. You, you recognize your purpose. You, you have to go to what my wife Holly calls the holy church of noticing. Yeah, the holy church of noticing. You have to pay attention to your life. 
If you pay attention to your life, you'll recognize your purpose. How will you recognize it? You'll recognize it because your purpose brings you alive. Yeah, you feel that sense of aliveness. You feel that sense of giddiness. You feel that, that sense of excitement. And what you're excited about, by the way, might be minuscule. It might be so small, it almost doesn't really, you know, nobody else really even notices, but you notice and it lights you up and you love it. You know when you're living your purpose because you feel inspired. Yeah. And, and you don't need to be entertained quite so much as before. Yeah, you don't need those 900 channels of entertainment because you're inspired and you're living an inspired life. So you don't need to watch a movie every night because you're you're in your own movie. You're in the movie of your life. You're in your hero's journey. You know when you're following your joy, you know, when you're following your joy, you know that's a sense of purpose too. You know, Joseph Campbell calls that following your bliss. But it's it's this sense of when you're really living your purpose, you you recognize that you're part of something bigger as well. This isn't just about you anymore. This is about all of us. And actually in the book, I try to try to illustrate that there are these three levels of purpose. There's the level of purpose that's to do with you and it's personal, but then there's another level of personal, which is shared. And it's about you and everybody else. And then there's even a universal purpose, you know, a sense of, uh, a purpose that we're all part of and that we all need to be part of, by the way, as well. And, and that is, by the way, I think humanity's great um, challenge right now is for us to reconnect ourselves with the whole of creation again. In fact, I think maybe this is the purpose of having a purpose, is that when we have a purpose, it connects us again to our heart. It connects us to living a more soulful life and we become interested in everybody else's life and we become uh, players in a bigger story, um, which is the story of creation, you know, and, and to play a part in that is an amazing thing. And by the way, I also say in the book, if, if after reading this book, you still don't know what your purpose is, I'll make it really easy for you. Just go out and be the most loving person you can be. Yeah. Perform as many acts of kindness as you can today, or even just one, but be the most loving person you can be. Because in the end, the only question you really need to ask is, how can I love the world today? There it is. How can I love the world today? Robert Holden, thank you so much for that wisdom. Uh, <laughs> that, it's, it's beautiful. And I think that's that's probably what we go out on. But before we do that, I have two questions that I ask everybody on this podcast because you have lived an incredibly inspired life and you have provided inspiration to so many people. And at some point they're going to make a movie about you in Hollywood. And I want to know when they do who the actor is going to be, that's going to play you in your movie. Okay. So uh, the actor that comes to mind is Tim Robbins. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> because um, I've always been told I look like Tim Robbins. And uh, in fact, I remember once um, seeing, uh, this was many years ago, I saw Susan Sarandon in a piece of theater at, um, in, in um, off Broadway in New York. And I remember my friend said, Hey, there's Susan Sarandon. Why don't you just go up to her and say, hi, honey. Where are we going for dinner tonight? Because, you know, she was with Tim Robbins and it was like, just see, she might not even know the difference, you know. Oh, my gosh. So, I love it. And uh, so that, that, Shawshank that, Redemption uh, is one of the best movies of all time. Yeah, no, as well. I mean, he's amazing. And so anyway, I get told I look a lot like Tim Robbins. So if Tim's available, I love and, it. You know, he'd like to do that. That would I'd be really grateful. That's fantastic. And Robert, what's your movie? <laughs> what's your movie going to be called? um the movie of my life mm -hmm. i'm i would i'd be happy to go with higher purpose i love it i really would because you know i think it's it's um that's my journey you know the journey of you know uh, uh a young boy living in a little village in littleton um you know and being absolutely lost uh, bewildered and broken and 
setting out on an adventure um, to try and heal my own heart. And along the way, you know, I discovered this sense of purpose and this big game that we can all play in and um, that we can all be part of. And, and this game is about, you know, loving each other and loving the world. And, and I can't think of a better movie to be part of. Higher purpose. You know, Robert, I think Tim <laughs> Robbins would be great, but I think you need to star in your own movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's there's a bit of wisdom that, you know, I can take on board for sure. <laughs> I love it. Well, I just want to thank you so much for blessing me and my listeners with this time and your wisdom. I just I can't tell you how grateful I am. Um, and for those listening, I hope that you have been inspired today as much as I have. I hope that Robert's story has encouraged you to listen to the voice inside that calls you to adventure because we want to hear your story next. If you have a story to tell or you need a nudge to create one, please send me an email. We'd also appreciate it if you'd help us spread the word by leaving a review and sharing or tagging Inspire Campfire in your social media. And until next time, I want to encourage you to get outside. Thank you for listening. Robert, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Scott. Love you. Love you too.